Hello everybody and welcome to the channel Out of Ammo, Out of Time. I'm your host, as usual, Karabi Terra 8 and we are here in episode 2 of season 3 of the Investigator Games with everybody's favourite librarian, Daisy Walker. Yes, and for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, welcome. What is the Investigator Games? It is like the Hunger Games. It's uh, like the Squid Games, except in this case, we take each investigator true solo through a scenario. And in season one, that was The Gathering. And in season two, that was The Midnight Masks. And here in season three, it is The Devourer Below, Amended. And we see how they do true solo. And depending on how they do, they end up in a league table like this one. Yes, and at the moment, we only have one person on the league table, which was Roland, who completed the devourer below last time. Now the points that Roland has here are carryovers from season one and season two. So if you haven't seen those series, I would recommend that you check that out. Probably check out Daisy in season one and season two as well if you haven't um, before seeing how she does here in the devourer below. Yes, and also spoilers if you are new to Arkham Horror the card game never played before I would probably recommend you seek out some introductory videos first I'm assuming that you know how to play at least a little bit so yes this is what we're going to do we're going to go through Daisy Walker uh, as a investigator she's uh, pretty iconic she was the first seeker investigator way back in the days of the core set and um, we will have a look at uh, her abilities and backstory and then we will just broadly talk about how what what her strategy is for defeating the um, devourer below and getting as many points as possible to get up the table. She's uh, she's not done too badly, but she's not top of the table at the moment. So this is her real opportunity to shine in this season. So yes, Daisy Walker, librarian. She's a seeker. Um, mystic i guess would be the best way to describe her so her stat line is very strong uh we can see um we've got three willpower and five intellect so that's massive but on the downside only two fight and two agility so the first thing is if you're going to do that if you're going to play daisy walker true solo it's going to be a little bit challenging um, from that perspective, because she's not really using her fight and evade skills. Having said that, it doesn't matter as much as it would for other investigators, because of course, as we will see, she can take spells. So as long as she's got spells on the table that allow her to, to a fight and or evade, she's going to be pretty okay. So that gives her the flexibility that she needs. So, uh, yes, and very high intellect. So getting clues is not going to be a problem for her. Three willpower for spells is okay, but you would probably be wanting to boost that as well most of the time. So her special ability is you can take an additional action during your turn, which can be used only on tome ability, action abilities. So, um now, in the core set, there was a few tomes. There's more tomes now, so there's a lot more that she can draw on. So over time, Daisy has become increasingly a more flexible and powerful uh, investigator because it, you know, she can just there's more tomes available for her to access um, in that way. So that's that's um, that gives her extra actions if she's using those tomes. So. You can build decks around that um, if that's what you want to do. Her elder side effect is um, plus zero. So she doesn't get a plus, but if you succeed, you can draw one card for each tome you control. So the the up the upside is, is that you can get some card drawing happening, which is a, a nice effect. But the plus zero is a little bit 
undercooked in a way. Uh, you always expect to have some benefit from having an elder sign, at least a plus one, but in this case it's plus zero. I know of books so powerful they can rewrite reality. Indeed. And then if we just look at um, the other side of Daisy. So she ha takes standard deck size, um, Seeker cards not to five, Mystic cards not to two. So she can't take the really high level powerful Mystic cards and then neutral cards not to five. Um, this is her back story. As a respected librarian at Miskatonic University, Daisy had always felt that books were the most important thing in her life. She explored in fiction what she abhorred in life, horror, violence, and fear. Then she stumbled across the John D. translation of the Necronomicon. It was blasphemous, unholy, and too awful to be real. But given her studies in obscure and occult subjects, Daisy knew that there was more truth than fiction within the book's pages. She began to wonder what other secrets the restricted collection of the Orn Library held. So there we go. That's Daisy's backstory. So, uh, yes, so um, in terms of um, what she's doing with her deck, so just to be clear with the decks, um, all investigators start with their official or unofficial Fantasy Flight Games starter decks in Season 1, which they can then upgrade with any cards once they do that. Now, Daisy hasn't gotten that many points so far. She got four points in Season 1 and only one point in Season 2, which really restricts what she can do. So since then, she's taken higher education, um, which allows her, if she has five or more cards in her hand, to um, get extra skill tests. So uh, that's rather nice, as long as she has resources and cards. So that's the only issue there. She has Pathfinder, which she upgraded, which is a great card for the Investigator Games because it's all about speed and getting things done quickly. So that's a great card to have. And then with the one point that she had left, the really obvious thing was to add another shriveling to her deck in to replace um, Barricade. So uh, hopefully that will help her. She's got lots and lots of different cards. So yes, I spoke to Daisy. Uh, and as I said, if you want a rundown of all her cards in detail, I do that in Season 1. Um, so if you go back there, you can see me talking through her cards and, and things there. But I spoke to Daisy in the trailers. Thank you to Miskatonic Trailers. As always, just outside the forest, we had a bit of a chat um, about her strategies for season three. She really wants to make a good showing. Uh, she doesn't think that's possible for her to uh, get to the very top of the table, but she can certainly get a far, far, much farther up the table than she is now. So um, her strategy is really um, to a couple of things. So first of all, if she can get the old book of law, either draw it at the beginning or use the research librarian, that's going to help massively because that's an extra action she can take to search uh, and draw cards. So it's a card drawing engine. So if she can get that set up, that's going to really help. The other thing, of course, that she can do is get clues fast. So she's hoping that in season three that she she's getting points for um, getting the clues on the location. So she's got Malign Christopher to do that and a various other Seeker cards and Drawn to the Flame. So quickly uh, amassing clues. She's got lots of ways of doing that. And then really, from her perspective, the key thing is storing up her offensive spells Things like Shriveling in particular, but she's got some others like Knives and Mind Over Matter. And of course, a Holy Rosary helps there as well, so that then she can defeat the big bad. So if she can get all of the locations and she can defeat the big bad, and maybe, maybe parley with the odd cultists along the way, I think she'd be pretty happy with that. Of course, things don't always go to plan in the investigator games, but that's her strategy. So her opening hand is going to be really critical. I mean, it's always critical, but for her, especially critical. But if she can get things like the old book of law, Malign Christopher and shriveling out, then she'll be in a good place to then 
really bring it home strongly. And that's, uh, that's what she's hoping to do. So there we go. That's Daisy Walker in a nutshell. Um, so we will close and shuffle up her deck. There we go. And we are here set up in Octagon. Uh, I've got all the cards here for the um, revised version of the Devara Below that we are playing. Now, if you're not sure what I mean by that, there is a video um, in the playlist for Season 3 that explains exactly what we're doing in the Devara Below to make it more roguelike, more interesting and more random. So if you haven't seen that, um, I recommend you do so you understand what we're doing differently than a normal Devara Below because um, I wasn't a big fan of, you know, the way it was going to play for the investigator games. The big bads are all out watching which one will end up being the one that Daisy takes on. Who knows? We will find out. But before all of that, and yeah, Daisy's there at the main path in the forest, just um, checking her tote bag, making sure she's ready to go. Um, and uh, yeah, just waiting for the horn. But before we do that, let's read the act and the agenda. So agenda 1A, the Arkham Woods. From interrogating members of the conspiracy within Arkham, you have learned that they are performing a rite of vengeance in response to the destruction of one of their master's lairs. You have entered the woods outside Arkham to try to stop them. The woods seem unnaturally cold and filled with a deathly silence. And investigating the trail, the evidence you've gathered has led you to the woods south of Arkham, where you believe a ritual to summon a being called Umor Doth is about to take place. Stealing your resolve, you set forth deeper into the woods, hoping to find the site of this ritual. So it's four doom to the agenda and three clues to the act. And um, yes, as I said, oh, there it goes. There goes the horn. And we are ready to play episode two in season three of the Investigator Games. Okay, so what do we want? What do we want? What do we want? No, well, what no, What do we want? But what does Daisy want? Well, I think as Daisy said, she very much wants uh, the old book of lore, the pirate tome, or the old book of lore. She wants that. Uh, she also said that she wanted uh, weaponry, particularly shriveling. And obviously her focus is going to be getting as many clues as quickly as she can because that's going to be the key way she's going to get points in this season of the Investigator game. So I think uh, that seems like a pretty good strategy for Daisy. Let's see what she does when she draws from her deck. So, we'll, so she will draw many and see what Daisy draws. Okay, so what have we got here? So yes, Milan Christopher Daisy would be very happy to have Milan Christopher along for the ride. Uh, Arcane Initiate, yeah, is also good because you know we can, she can look up uh, and get the spells that she needs. So that can sometimes be super helpful, sometimes not. The problem for Daisy there is the extra doom, so you wouldn't play that until the witching hour. Flashlight is less of a thing, I think. So this is this is lots of clue stuff and no weaponry. So yeah, and the thing is, deduction is not so such of a big thing in True Solo here in the Devourer below because a lot of the locations are literally one clue. So um, I'm thinking. I'm thinking what Daisy might do here. What is Daisy going to do? Oh, she's throwing in the Arcane Initiate. She's throwing in the Flashlight. And she's throwing in Deduction. She's keeping Working a Hunch and Milan Christopher. No, she's putting in Working a Hunch as well. So she's clearly trying to get something like some more weaponry or something like that. Four more cards. One, two, three, four. Uh, oh, dear. Oh dear, oh dear. So there we go. Daisy hasn't managed to get any kind of weaponry, but 
There's the tote bag, so Daisy would be happy with that. Um, however, uh, the problem with that is that she doesn't have any tome assets, so she didn't get the old Book of Law. She's got Malign Christopher. Water protection is super helpful because, you know, stuff happens. And, yeah, some ways of drawing cards and investigating. Emergency cash could be helpful, maybe. So there we go. Uh, she's shaking her head there. Not quite what she was after. Uh, that's a little bit disappointing for Daisy, I think. But anyway, it's the way it goes in the investigator games. So here we go. Uh, what's she going to do? What's she going to do? First action. I think we know what she's going to do. Yeah, she's going to spend four and bring out Milan. And Milan has joined her in the forest. Um, yeah, he's in the forest alongside her in his white sneakers uh, looking ready to, to run through the forest with Daisy. So uh, that's a good start. Um, da, 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 da. So that's the first action. So I think it might be time to pop into one of these. Let's go to this Arkham Woods location. Let's flip it over. These are all random, of course. We've got Cliffside. Yes, it's a one clue, two shroud location. Uh, you can only investigate this using <laughs> using agility instead of the skill indicated. I'm not sure why you need agility. Maybe it's a very steep cliff. Atop a nearby plateau, you can see things of cultist activity. You will have to climb the cliff in order to reach the top. There you go. I answered uh, the question right there for Daisy. So, yes, using ah, two versus a two. Oh, boy. Maybe uh, working a hunch would have been a useful card to keep. Uh, Matt, now, uh, before we go any further, we have we have moved into a woods location, which means we have to draw to see what the random effect is in this location. And the random effect is an Elder Sign! Woo! An Elder Sign removed a doom from the current agenda. There is no doom in the current agenda, so <laughs> that was all a bit of a waste, and the crowd is a little bit disappointed about that. Poor old Daisy, not getting a break. It would have been good to get a clue. That would have been a plus one, but uh, fortunately, an Elder Sign doesn't give us anything because there is no doom. We've got one... Daisy's got one action left. What is she going to do? Well, I guess she could just... Go ahead and, tr so there's two things. Daisy could maybe go ahead and investigate with a two versus a two or use the emergency cash and get some more cash. Uh, I don't think she's going to throw in her tote bag. So I think, uh, yes, looks like she's going to go the two versus a two. And she gets another Elder Sign. Unbelievable. Wow. And she, uh, no, 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 Elder Sign is plus zero. Draw a card for each tome you control. She's not, she's not um, controlling any tomes, but she does get the clue, which means uh, she gets a resource. Very nice. And also the crowd goes wild because she gets her first victory point. Look at that. Wow, and she waves to the crag. Crag goes wild. Things are going so well uh, from that perspective. There we go. So Daisy's off to a great start. So she started on the main path. She played Malign Christopher. She moved to the first Arkham Woods location, uh, which had to be investigated using agility. And she went ahead and did that and has had two Elder Signs in a row. Luck is on her side today. So we will move in to the enemy phase or indeed the enema phase as we call it there are no enemies or indeed enemas to speak of so we can move into upkeep and there it is there it is there's the shriveling that's what we've been looking for that's what daisy be very happy with that she can get that down and then she's confident at the very least that she can take on one of the big bads um however i'm imagining she might want something else to sort of take on the less big bads so to speak but we shall see we shall see so uh yeah pretty good so let's move in to uh, the uh mythos phase the first doom is down let's see what the lovely encounter deck has and the encounter deck has umordoth's hunger Revelation. Each investigator must discard one card at random from his or her hand. Each investigator who has no cards in his or her hand is killed. 
Heal d one damage from each enemy in play. Well, there we go. So uh, no enemies, but ah, she's got to lose a card at random. Random discard, and it's Daisy's tote bag has gone. That's okay. Could have been worse. Could have been shriveling, so not too bad. There we go. So that's all right. Okay, we will move into the investigation phase. Three actions on to Daisy. What's she going to do now? What is she going to do now? Um, oh, looks like she is going to... Yes, she is going to play the shriveling. There we go. The shriveling is out on the table. Yeah, not surprising there. Um, I would have done the same. So that was, our that was her first action. Second action, she is moving back to the main path. Now, I would be surprised if Daisy... Um, actually then moves to one of the other locations simply because it's her final action and she doesn't want to end up with something bad happening with no actions left. So uh, I'm not sure what she's going to do here. Could do lots of different things. Okay, she plays emergency cash. That's a pretty safe, safe thing to do and she gets three resources. Okay, so there we go. That was That was a kind of a it's kind of nothing round for Daisy, but an important one. She played shriveling. She moved back to the main path and she emergency cashed. So the problem is with only two cards, she's not really able to use higher education. So I think she'd be focusing on getting more cards into her hand. I guess with the old book of law, you can do that a bit easier. So yeah, she's a bit low on the old cards here. But anyway, that's uh, we'll see what happens. So we will move into the enema phase. No enemies to speak of. We move into upkeep and get working a hunch. Yeah, Daisy be kind of happy with that. I mean, it depends on whether one of these other locations is particularly difficult to get clues. Uh, if nothing else, it's a fast action. So yes, so there we go. So we will move into the mythos phase. Two Doom are now down on the agenda. Let's see what the encounter deck has. And it has the Mask of Umordoth attached to the furthest cultist enemy. Place a Doom on that enemy. Well, there are no cultist enemies. If there are no cultist enemies. Search the encounter deck and discard, discard pile for a cultist enemy. Draw it and attach Mask of Umordoth to it. Shuffle the encounter deck. Attach enemy gets plus two health. If attach enemy is not unique, it gains aloof. If attach enemy is unique, it gains retaliate. So there we go. So we've got to find um, a cultist enemy. It is a cultist enemy. So, um, yeah. Um, I think the disciple of the devourer is the, is the kind of standard cultist enemy in here. Yeah. The other ones aren't cultists. So we'll bring out the Disciple of the Devourer. We will spawn the Disciple of the Devourer over here with a Doom gains aloof. So uh, after you spawn the Disciple of the Devourer, you must put a Doom on it or place one of your, your clues on its location. Or you can do that. Oh, okay. Well, maybe... Is that right? After you spawn Disciple of Devourer, you must either place one Doom on it or place one of your clues on its location. I'm going to put the clue on rather than... I'd rather do it that way. I've got a way of getting a quick clue anyway, and it gets aloof uh, as well. Plus two, it gains aloof. So let's just add that here so that we remember that this is aloof. Um, yeah, so interesting. Okay, there we go. All right. So we will move in to the investigation phase. Three actions on to Daisy. What is Daisy going to do? Okay, well, I think, yes, I think Daisy is probably, yes, she is moving into this location. Uh, this this uh, cultist has a loof. It's the Arkham Woods on Hallowed Ground location. There actually should be two clues here because we dropped a clue here as well. Uh, forced, after you enter this location, test four. If you fail, take a damage and a horror. 
Okay, so test four, we are a three. Um, yeah, I think we just go ahead and wear this. Let's see what the, uh, let's see what the chaos bag has. And the chaos bag has a tablet. So we, uh, we fail. If there's a monster enemy take a damage, well, it's not a monster, but we take a damage and a horror. A damage and a horror. Actually, we could put the horror onto Milan, can't we? Yeah. Ooh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, the clearing has been the site of dark rites since colonists first came to the area over two centuries ago. Okay. Okay. What's Daisy going to do here? So before we do anything, we've moved into this new location. So... Um, so we better see uh, what we get from the chaos bag in terms of a random effect. Let's see what the chaos bag says. And we get a minus one, minus one. Drop one clue at your current location. Well, we don't have any clues. We already dropped it. So there we go. So no effect again, really. Uh, so there we go. So uh, what we're going to do, what's, uh, sorry, what's Daisy going to do here? Uh, yes, she's spending two. She's bringing out working a hunch. And there we go. She's getting a, a quick clue. So there we go. Uh, discover. Uh, didn't successfully investigate, so we don't get any money for that. Uh, second action. Right, I see where she's going here. She's throwing in perception. So that's a seven, that's an eight, an eight on a four. That's pretty good. Let's see what the chaos bag has. Chaos bag has a skull, number of monster enemies in play. There are none. So that's another clue, two clues. And indeed the crag goes wild because again, she uh, gets another victory point for another location. There we go. Uh, that was... Uh, resource and we get to draw a card get the medical texts the medical texts okay um, yeah a medical text allow you to heal which could be a thing if you heal one damage yeah, and it's a for Daisy it's a uh, an extra action I guess so that's something but to be honest, one of the things that would be good for her would be to get some extra cards. So there we go. So one action left. Let's move back to the main path. And there we go. So a pretty good round for Daisy, I think. She uh, she moved into um, moved into the Ark of Woods as a first action. Used working a hunch to get a free clue. Successfully investigated and then move back. So that's pretty fast, pretty fast and pretty efficient so far. Two victory points and it's only turn three. Doing pretty, pretty well, I think. Um, yeah, pretty impressive so far. Um, might be good to get some cultists that she could parley maybe. I mean, if she does that, that's gonna give her extra victory points. Otherwise she's gonna end up with about six victory points, you know, so it would be good for something like that to happen. We'll just have to see how things go. So there we go. That's the end of that turn. So, so far, so good. Let's move into the enema phase. No enemies to speak of. Let's move into uh, upkeep, uh, perception. Okay, that's good. Okay, number three doom. One away from that flipping. Let's see what the encounter deck has. And it has the yellow sign. Test four, if you fail, Take two horror and search your deck for a madness weakness. Draw that card and shuffle your deck. Hmm. Okay. Now we've got a couple of choices here because we're a three. So we would fail this. We would take two horror, which we can take pretty easily. And then we would look for our madness weakness, which is overzealous, right? because our other weakness is our Necronomicon, which is not a madness. And I'm pretty sure Overzealous is a madness weakness. I'm going to check. Let me just, I think, uh, no, I'm pretty sure it is. So we don't want to do that. 
overzealous is just horrible. So let's actually use the good old Ward of Protection, non-weakness treachery card, cancel that effect and take a horror. So we will cancel that effect and we will take the horror because oh, overzealous is pretty nasty and we don't want to be drawing that unless we absolutely have to. Okay, let's move into the investigation phase. Three actions on to Daisy. What's Daisy going to do now? Um, yeah, I guess, I guess, yep. Oh, she's going to move in. There we go. Okay, we'll flip this card. And it is the Corpse Ridden Clearing. Corpse Ridden Clearing, lovely name. Half-eaten animal corpses everywhere. Three shroud. Each enemy at this location cannot take more than one damage for each attack. Ooh, that is a nasty, nasty card. Uh, came up for Roland. Really is nasty. But let's see. We have a random effect to see what happens when we move in. And we get a auto fail. It's been, oh my goodness. Auto fails and elder signs. Auto fail, add one doom to the current agenda. Oh dear. Never mind. Okay. It was going to flip anyway. So again, not a big deal. Um, there we go. So second action. Uh, I guess we throw in, She. I guess Daisy's going to throw in perception. So that's five, six, eight. Eight on a three. Chaos bag gives a minus one. That's a success. Draw a card. Pathfinder gets the clue. Gets another victory point. We're really getting the victory points thick and fast here now. One action left. Move back to the main path. So there you go. Daisy is racing this. She is running through this like there's no tomorrow. She's only in turn four. She's already got three victory points. Things are looking good for her from that perspective. Um, you know, I'm sure she'd probably be, I don't know, I'm hoping, she'd probably be hoping for something like a Peter Warren. You know, an ideal would be go to the Final Woods location, get a cultist, get Peter Warren Parley, that kind of thing. I just realized Malign Christopher, of course, she, uh, she got um, that um, clue. So that's another money as well. Okay, so there we go. Pretty good, pretty good. Moved in, investigated, moved out. Don't want to be hanging around in this corpse-ridden clearing uh, because you don't want to be fighting things there. Enemy phase, no enemies to speak of. And then upkeep, uh, the magnifying glass. There we go. So we're building up our cards, but I suppose in Daisy's mind, maybe her mind would be turning to combat. So maybe fewer things like that, more combat. Pathfinder, useful, but possibly would have been useful more at the beginning, now that we're, there's only one location left, so maybe less useful now. So we will move into the Mythos phase, and indeed, there we go, all the Doom has. Let's flip this over. Throughout the woods, a shrieking cry echoes from somewhere deeper in the forest. A score of hideous voices answer the call, inhuman as the baying of hounds, and yet articulate, repeating a singular name, Umor Doth, Umor Doth, Umor Doth. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck and discard piles from the top until a monster enemy is discarded and spawn that enemy at the main path. Place a doom on that enemy. Okay. Okay, so... Yep, shuffle this in. Yep. Uh, and then just start discard cards till we get a monster enemy. Here we go. Yep. We have a monster Biaki. Ooh. Okay, place a doom on that enemy. Ooh, okay. The ritual begins, Umor Doth, Umor Doth, Umor Doth. The chanting builds in intensity, echoing into the cold air of the night. The sparse clouds in the sky coalesce above the Arkham Woods, blotting out the faint light of the stars. Each enemy gets plus one fight and plus one evade. No, no, no. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy, boy, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Okay. Uh, right. So, Okay. And indeed, we will draw from the encounter deck, and the encounter deck has frozen in fear. 
Oh no, Daisy. Oh dear. Oh, wow. what a terrible draw. Wow. Okay. So we've got the three clues and we could have, of course, flipped investigating the trail, but I think that what just just reading between the lines, I think Daisy wanted to get out of the Arkham Woods because I think she didn't want to face any enemies and I can understand that strategy. But now suddenly she's quaking with fear and there's a screeching Biaki who uh, gets plus one fight and plus one evade. Uh, and yeah, oof, this is this is pretty nasty. Um, I think, uh, I don't know, but I imagine that uh, Daisy is going to have to probably look to use her shriveling. She probably wanted to keep it for the big bad, but I'm feeling that she probably doesn't feel like she has a choice, but we'll see what she does. Okay, here she goes. What's Daisy going to do now? Mm. First action. In fact, first two actions. Yes, indeed. What's Daisy going to do here? I mean, she might fight with the shriveling because that is a three, but the Biaki is plus one fight. So is a four, four. Oh dear, this is this is not good. Mm. And she... Uh, only has three cards, so she can't use higher education either. Oh dear, this is this is just looking bad. Um, mm, what is Daisy gonna do? What is she gonna do? Oh boy, this is a really nasty position to be in. Because she's got a choice. She could fight with medical techs with a three versus a four. Not likely to work. She can evade with a three versus a four. Not likely to work. She can shrivel with a three versus a four. Not likely to work. So there's no good solutions for her here. Yes. First action, she draws and takes an attack of opportunity to, oh my goodness, two horror and one damage. Wow. Okay. Uh-huh. First action. Mm. Second action. She's playing the uh, she's playing the arcane studies and taking yet another two. Wow, this is this is looking bad. She's got one action left. Um, hmm. She can't fight and she can't evade. She's only got one action left. What is she going to do? Wow. Okay. She is taking a, another card. Uh, Milan Christopher dies. And she takes... Oh, dear. She takes another horror. Wow. Okay, that's the end of her go. That was terrible. She took so many attacks of opportunity. Frozen in fear, three. She's a three versus a three. She can make that a four versus a three. Um, See what the chaos bag has. Chaos bag has a minus one. So she succeeds and she gets rid of the frozen in fear. Wow. Okay. Enemy phase. She takes two horror 
He's nearly dead. And one damage. Oh dear, this is looking bad. Then we move into upkeep, emergency cash. That's probably not what you wanted. Oh dear, Daisy's looking very, very sad here. Mythos phase, first Doom is down. Let's see what the encounter deck has. Test three, for each point you fail by, discard a card at random from your hand. Okay, so she is a three versus a three. Let's see what the chaos bag has. She gets a minus three. Um, so she has to three. She has to lose three cards from her hand randomly. Random discard one, random discard two, random discard three. Okay. Oh dear, oh dear. Okay. We will move into the investigation phase. Three actions onto Daisy. Well, this is really do or die now, because if this doesn't work, then it's all over. So, shriveling, three versus a four, but you can make that a four versus a four, a five versus a four. Let's go with a five versus a four, because she probably, oh, and she can't take any horror either. All right, let's see what the chaos bag is. And minus one, she succeeds and does two damage. Wow. Whew. Okay, let's go again. Shriveling again. She can spend two resources. So that gives her a three, a five versus a four again. So a five versus a four. Chaos bag gives us a minus four and she uh, doesn't succeed. So it's got one chance left. Three versus a four on the Biaki. Chaos bag gives her a tablet. Oh dear, and it is a monster. Take a damage. There we go. There's the damage. And poor old Daisy goes down. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Daisy. Oh, things were going so well. We were only in turn six, but uh, unfortunately, uh, the screeching Biaki uh, was just impossible for her to deal with. She didn't have the cards in the hand. Things were really, really bad. So there we go. That's how it goes in the investigator game. So... Yes, she finished on turn six with, with three points, three victory points. So we will see where she is in the table. But thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. Now next time we will be taking Skidzo Tool through the Devara below and we'll see how he goes. But until then, I'm Krabby Terror 8. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye. Thank you.